Welcome to Times of MGO. Good evening. Myself Abhishek Jain. Today's main headlines are starting with MGO News. Our school started a YouTube channel MGO School Live on 22nd July 2020-20. Now, which has received more than 1.16k subscribers. In this channel, we published an on-up event on the topic PPW on-up fest 2020-20 on 31st August 2020-20, which has received more than 1,000 views. In this video, all the pre-primary teachers presented themselves by a short clip with flowers. Mrs. Devi Jordana and Mrs. Mukta Abrahanam explained us how we celebrate Onam. Mrs. Asha Thomas Ma'am taught us the importance of Onam by demonstrating a story of Lord Mahabali. Mrs. Jina Ma'am taught us how to prepare Onam food and serve them on a banana leaf. Also, many pre-primary students participated with great enthusiasm and gave their best in this year. Now come international news. Pakistan deposed Prime Minister Mr. Nawaz Sharif on Sunday staged a political comeback by criticizing the powerful army. There is more than 31 million 529,187 corona cases with 7 million 412,880 active cases. Now for national news. Union Defense Minister Mr. Rajnath Singh says opposition is trying to mislead the power on the basis of rumors. Here are in second with 5,68,740 corona cases by US stands the first. From today onwards, there is total lockdown in Chhattisgarh due to immense increase in COVID patients. CBSE class 10th and 12th compartment exam 2020 was started on 22nd September and will end in 28th September for class 10 and 30th September for class 12. New education policy NEP 2020 has announced a new school structure as 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. That's all for today's news. Thank you and stay tuned for further updates. about a very interesting chapter that is nutrition in plants that is the first chapter of our science book before i begin i would like to thank all the respected teacher for giving me this opportunity let us start we all know that we all require food even in fact all living organisms require food plants can make their own food but animals including humans cannot make their own food. So what are the sources of food for humans and animals? It is plants or animals. However, the humans and animals used to feed on the plants or on the animals that feed on the plants. That is why it is the plants that are the ultimate source of food for all the living organisms. So we learned that food is a vital part of our life. But what are the functions of the food in our body and why do we need food? So we need food for these following reasons. First, we need food for energy, for growth, for repairing and maintenance of our body. But how the food is able to do all these functions for our body? It is because of some components of food that are essential for our body called nutrients. There are different types of nutrients found in food, namely carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals. Carbohydrates and fats are energy giving food. They used to give us energy. Protein is essential for growth while vitamin and minerals helps our body to fight from diseases as well as it helps us to keep ourselves healthy. So we learned about nutrients that are essential components present in the food. But what is nutrition? Nutrition is the mode of taking in food and its utilization by the body. It is different from nutrients because nutrients are the essential components while the nutrition is the mode of taking in food 
and its utilization by the body. There are different types of nutrition that we can find, namely autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Autotrophic mode of nutrition is usually found in green plants, while the heterotrophic mode of nutrition is found in animals including humans. This heterotrophic mode of nutrition is again divided into three parts that is insectivorous, parasitic and saprophytic mode of nutrition. Autotrophic mode of nutrition. Let us differentiate between heterotrophic and autotrophic. Organisms can prepare their own food. In autotrophic mode of nutrition, the organisms can make their food themselves. While in heterotrophic mode of nutrition, organisms depend on other organisms for food. Example of autotrophs are plants. Example of heterotrophs are animals including humans so this is all about the different modes of nutrition we find different modes of nutrition because earth is having a number of organisms living that have different way of eating habits plants are autotrophs which means they can synthesize their own food but how let us understand photosynthesis Food making process in plants is called photosynthesis. So it is because of the process of photosynthesis that plants are able to make their own food. Carbon dioxide, sunlight, water, chlorophyll are important for photosynthesis. Plants need carbon dioxide, sunlight, water, chlorophyll to perform this process. In the process of photosynthesis, the plants takes in water and minerals from the roots. The roots transport this water and minerals to the leaves. Leaves are the food factories of the plants. Here are the places where the food is produced. Leaves take in carbon dioxide from the air through stomata. Stomata are tiny openings on the leaves that we cannot see with naked eyes. When the plant has carbon dioxide and water, with the help of chlorophyll, that is the green pigment present in the leaves, it captures solar energy from the sun and makes it food. That is why the process of photosynthesis is named like that. Because in this word, photo means light. Synthesis means to combine. Hence, the process of photosynthesis can only take place when there is solar energy this entire process is to be called as photosynthesis in the process of photosynthesis the plants give up oxygen and makes carbohydrate with these carbohydrates that is produced gets ultimately stored as starch So we learned that photosynthesis is the food making process in plants. Let's summarize this photosynthesis through this equation. So we have this equation that is carbon dioxide plus water. So plants take carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight from the chlorophyll. It makes carbohydrate plus oxygen. So this is the process of photosynthesis as in the form of equation. The carbohydrates formed in this process get stored as starch and the oxygen is given out by the plants. But we may think that instead of carbohydrates we need other nutrients also from the plants then how do we get that? These substances like proteins and fats are also made of carbon, oxygen and hydrogen of which the carbohydrates are made. But proteins are nitrogenous substances. As they are nitrogenous substances, they need nitrogen. Nitrogen is present in the air. But the plants cannot take that nitrogen. It needs to be converted into soluble form so that plants can use them. How this is created? 
it is done by the bacteria known as rhizobium the rhizobium takes in nitrogen and converts it into a soluble form so that the plants can easily use it this symbiotic relation helps the plant to exist so we have learned about photosynthesis let us learn about cells these are very important every body of living organism i me you everyone is made up of tiny units called cells like our body has several parts the cells also have some several parts these are cell membrane nucleus cytoplasm now what is a cell membrane cell membrane is the outer boundary of any cell nucleus nucleus is the central part of any cell it is surrounded by cytoplasm from all the areas cytoplasm what is a cytoplasm cytoplasm is the jelly like substance that surrounds the nucleus and is bounded by the cell membrane every body of living organism that is amoeba also has this structure of cells so we learned about plants and the way by which they can synthesize their own food but some plants are not having the presence of chlorophyll in their leaves because of which they cannot do the process of photosynthesis then how do these plants acquire their food well these plants follow the heterotrophic mode of nutrition let us see some other modes of nutrition in plants parasitic mode of nutrition is one type of heterotrophic mode of nutrition that we can find in such plants that are not able to synthesize their own food nutrition in which organisms live on the bodies of other organisms and derive nutrients is called the parasitic mode of nutrition in this mode of nutrition the parasites what are parasites parasites are the organisms that follow the parasitic mode of nutrition deprives the plant or the other animal on which they are dwelling the host of valuable nutrients that is why this type of parasitic mode of nutrition is different from saprotrophic mode of nutrition that we will learn in the coming seconds now the next type of heterotrophic mode of nutrition is insectivorous in insectivorous the plants get some of their nutrient requirement by feeding on insects in this type of nutrition the plants used to eat insects because they want to fulfill their nitrogen requirement as they grow on such soil that lack nitrogen some examples of plants that follow the insectivorous mode of nutrition are pitcher plant venus flytrap they are green in color that is why they perform the process of photosynthesis but as they grow in such soils that lack nitrogen they have to eat insects so that they could fulfill their nutrient requirement let us learn the next type of heterotrophic mode of nutrition found in plants that is saprophytic in saprophytic mode of nutrition organisms derive nutrients from dead and decaying matter this saprophytic mode of nutrition is found in saprotrophs in these types of nutrition the plants used to live on dead and decaying matter and then you they used to pour some the digestive juices over the dead and decaying matter convert it into a soluble form and then they used to utilize it hence the saprophytic mode of nutrition is different from the parasitic because if we see in saprophytic the organisms are deriving nutrients from dead and decaying matter while in parasitic the nutrients are being taken from other organism some examples of saprophytic following saprophyte saprotrophs are fungi mushrooms bread mold etc 
so we learn about some heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is found in plants other than that there is symbiotic relationship that is also found in plants in this type of relationship two organisms live together and share food shelter minerals water etc one example of symbiotic relationship is lichens lichens is an association of fungus and algae in this association the fungus provides algae with water minerals it gives it the shelter and in return the algae provides the fungus with the food it prepares by the process of photosynthesis now we have learned many things about plants about food and the different nutrition so let us get a quick recap of what we learned we learned that food is very essential for all of us we need food for energy growth and maintenance for our body there are different components of food like carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals there are different modes of nutrition followed by different plants that is autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition in autotrophic mode of nutrition the plants synthesize their own food they do it by the process of photosynthesis in the process of photosynthesis sunlight chlorophyll carbon dioxide and water is essential and in this process carbohydrates and oxygen is created so and we also learned about different heterotrophic mode of nutrition so this was all about this chapter thank you have a nice day a very pleasant morning to respected principal sir worthy teachers and all the viewers watching this video biology has a bizarre collection of families of a variety of living organisms on this earth and one such family is the family of microorganisms microorganisms in human world are classified as our friends and foes friends which can offer us with delicacies like idli and dosa and foes which can leave us in the mouth of diseases like typhoid and pneumonia but by looking at the brighter side today i kushi sahu of class 12 bio p mgm senior secondary school sector 6 bilai is going to introduce you all with the microbes in human welfare starting with microbes in household products first comes curd that is dahi which is an important part of many dishes in india Lactic acid bacteria like Lactobacillus acidophilus convert lactose sugar of milk into lactic acid which causes coagulation of milk protein casein leading to the formation of curd this is performed at temperature around 40 degrees celsius and this bacteria also improves its nutritional quality by increasing vitamin b12 in it do you know that in our stomach too The lactic acid bacteria plays a very important role in checking disease causing microbes. Second is microbes in industrial products. Many yeast species like Saccharomyces cerevisiae are used in brewing industry for the production of alcoholic drinks like whiskey, beer, wine etc. For this reason these are also known as brewers yeast. they form in the raw materials like malted cereals and fruit juices required for the alcoholic beverages for to produce ethanol now one of the most significant discoveries of the 20th century which has greatly contributed towards the welfare of the human society is the discovery of antibiotics the first antibiotic was discovered by alexander fleming Alexander Fleming while working on Staphylococci bacteria once observed a mold growing in one of his unwashed culture plates around which Staphylococci could not grow he found out that it was due to a chemical produced by the mold and he named it penicillin after the mold penicillium natatum so penicillin is our first antibiotic antibiotics are the chemical substances which are produced 
by some microbes and can kill or retard the growth of other disease causing microbes its full potential as an effective antibiotic was established later by ernestine and howard florey ernestine howard florey and alexander fleming were awarded nobel prize in 1945 for this discovery antibiotics have greatly improved our capacity to treat deadly diseases such as plague whooping cough diphtheria and leprosy now we know that large quantities of wastewater are generated every day in cities and towns a majority of this wastewater is human excreta this municipal wastewater is also called as sewage and if untreated sewage is discharged directly into rivers it leads to their pollution and increase in water borne diseases so sewage treatment is very important before releasing it in water bodies to prevent water pollution here also our tiny microbes lend their helping hands many methane producing bacteria like methanobacterium serve this purpose microbes in production of biogas Biogas is a mixture of gases containing predominantly methane produced by the microbial activity of methanogens bacteria producing methane along with carbon dioxide and hydrogen and which can be used as a fuel the excreta dung of cattle commonly called as gobar is rich in these bacteria and is used for the generation of biogas commonly called as gobar gas the biogas thus produced is used for cooking and lighting the picture of biogas plant is shown on the left hand side of your screen next is microbes as biocontrol agents biocontrol refers to the use of biological methods for controlling plant diseases and pests in the modern society these problems have been tackled increasingly by the use of chemicals by use of insecticides and pesticides These chemicals are toxic and extremely harmful to human beings and animals alike and have been polluting our environment soil ground water fruits vegetables and crop plants our soil is also polluted through our use of various sites to remove weeds but the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis bt plays its role here it is used as a biocontrol agent to control the butterfly caterpillars These are available in sachets as dried spores which are mixed with water and sprayed onto vulnerable plants such as brassicas and fruit trees where these are eaten by the insect larvae in the gut of the larvae the toxin is released and the larvae get killed the bacterial disease will kill the caterpillars but leave other insects unharmed because of the development of methods of genetic engineering the scientists have introduced Bacillus thuringiensis toxin gene into plants such plants are resistant to attack by insect pests bt cotton is one such example the picture of which you can see on the lower left hand side of your screen last but not the least microbes as biofertilizers with our present day lifestyles environmental pollution is a major cause of concern the use of chemical fertilizers to meet the ever increasing demand of agricultural produce has contributed significantly to this pollution so there is a large pressure to switch to organic farming the use of biofertilizers biofertilizers are organisms that enrich the nutrient quality of the soil the main sources of biofertilizers are bacteria fungi and cyanobacteria we have studied about the nodules on the roots of leguminous plants formed by the symbiotic association of rhizobium these bacteria fix atmospheric nitrogen into organic forms which is used by the plants as nutrient the picture on the upper left hand side is the picture of root nodules formed by rhizobium other bacteria can fix atmospheric nitrogen while free living in the soil examples azospirum and azotobacter thus enriching the nitrogen content of the soil similarly fungi are known to form symbiotic associations with plants which is known as mycorrhiza the picture of which you can see on the lower left hand side 
of your of your ski screen many members of the genus lomus form mycorrhiza the fungal symbiont in these associations absorbs phosphorus from soil and passes it to the plant plants having such associations show other benefits also such as resistance to root borne pathogens tolerance to salinity and drought so this was all my presentation on microbes in human welfare hope you like this video thank you very much from class 6a we will be discussing about time have you ever wondered how time flies and we even don't realize it time is precious we all believe that right but sometimes we just don't utilize it or for various reasons yes even i did that a lot but then i made friends with my wall clock let me share you a small story Let's go to my friends. This is my friend Clock. Mr. Long and Mrs. Short lived in a round house called Clock. They were very busy in their routine and had to move from one place to another continuously. They had 12 kids which needed their attention in a cyclic routine manner in a day. They were named as 1R, 2R, 3R, 4R, etc. till 12 hr mr long was fast and worked 12 times more than mrs short mrs short was slow and met the children twice a day while mr long met them 24 times mr long takes 5 minutes to reach from one kid to next kid to fulfill their demands while mrs short takes 60 minutes that is 1 hour to reach from one kid to next kid Kids were happy with their mother as she could stay longer than dad. This lovely never stoppable family was residing at my place and I could see their dedication and learned a life lesson to never disrespect time. Things were all happy when suddenly things became slower, slower and slower and suddenly Mr. Long and Mrs. Short stopped moving as they were hungry. All kids were worried for parents and started crying but hardly got any help. I noticed that the sweet house was all calm and quiet and the things around me started getting disturbed. So I decided to give them that food that is battery. They started moving again with much enthusiasm. The kids were happy. Hooray! What a lovely time it is. So now my friends, do you understand that Mr. Long means the minute hand takes 5 minutes to reach from one place to another while mrs short means the hour hand takes 60 minute that is 1 hour to reach from one place to another so now when we divide 60 by 12 we get 5 or when we divide 60 by 5 we get 12 and when we multiply 12 by 5 we get 60 the math is simple so let's understand that there are a total of 24 hours in a day when we say it's 0 hours it's 12 midnight and when we say 1200 hours it's 12 noon when we divide the 24 hours in two parts calling am and pm that is anti meridian and post meridian time starting from 0 100 hours that is 12 midnight to 12 noon is am and from 12 noon to midnight is pm let's answer some questions how much spare time do i have till i take off the plane will departure at 8:45 am and the time right now is 7:30 am so 8:45 minus 7:30 is 1 hour 15 minutes. So 
So friends, it's so simple. So let's take another question. The time right now is 8 hours 45 minutes and the duration of the flight is 2 hour 15 minutes. So 8 hour plus 8 hour 45 minutes plus 2 hour 15 minutes is 1100 hours. Means 11 a.m. It's so simple. Let's have some other types of questions. Match the 24 hour clock to its 12 hour clock. 2240. Now, to solve this question, we need to deduct 12 from this 2200 hours. Keep the minutes aside for some time. So, 22 minus 12 is 10. So, the answer is 10 hours. 40 minutes. But as it is after 12 noon, we need to mention PM here. So the answer is 10.40 PM. Let's do others too. 14 minus 12 is 2. So the answer is 2.10 PM. Similarly, 16 25 means 16 minus 12 which is 4.25 p.m. So, let's take the last one. 21.50. 21 minus 12 is 9 and the 50 remains same. So, the answer is 9.50 p.m. See, all answers are right. This is how we can solve many problems of time. That's all for today. Thank you. Have a nice day. Stay home. Stay safe. Fight Corona.